What's up, people? We are back with more of Sound of Drop Fall into Poison. So, in the previous video, Mayu saw her little sister. Was it Mari? I think it was Mari. And Himino kind of didn't believe her and whatnot, saying that, yeah, you're just in shock and whatnot. And we're not entirely sure whether it's actually true. So, yeah, let's just keep continuing because there's not much we can say. Like, it could be true, it couldn't be true, All the, the only thing we can actually do is just to dig deeper into the story to find out exactly what's happening. So yeah, let's do that, let's do that thing. Saying only that, I turn my back on Himeno. I, when I glance back, Himeno's shocked expression is getting further away. She was there, Mari had definitely been there. Because the keychain Himeno had, it belonged to Mari. There was no way I could forget. It was just before Mari went missing. Uh oh, black and white, or more like grey. For the two of you, just this once. Upon saying that, mom handed us 100 yen coins each. That day was a cold winter day. At the Mountain Aquarium souvenir area, the smell of construction lingered faintly in the air. There, was, uh, there were manta and penguin stuffed animals, stationary with the logo in it, and various souvenirs. At the entrance to that souvenir stand, there were the gacha gacha machines containing that keychain. I don't remember all of the various types, but star sand was packed in the plastic drops, and the charms were all mo modeled after fish at the aquarium. It was fairly typical for a gacha gacha, but at that time it seemed very enticing to me. It was the same for Mari, and we gazed into the gacha gacha machine. Mari was the one who would usually beg our parents at this point, but neither of us had bought a souvenir, and both of us said we wanted the keychains. Since mom couldn't be completely broken, she emphasized the only one time bit. Yay! Mari held out both hands with glee, while I play f uh, while I probably just smiled. I remember that inside. I was just as happy. As to which of us went first, it was of course the more assertive Mari. She was always like this, a cheerful and inquisitive child. How cute, Mr. Star! Mari got a starfish charm keychain. At this point, Mari still didn't know the difference between a starfish and a star. I was next to get one. It was a pink drop with a jellyfish charm. Jellyfish, jellyfish. Oh, a jellyfish. <gasps> ah, that's the one I wanted most. Mari pointed the index finger of her tiny hand, exclaiming in a loud voice. Mari was just learning how to use first per uh, how to use first person when she mentioned herself. Instead of a normal I or me, she said it slowly. Hey, big sister, train No way, I want this one. Aww. Naturally, as I had already fallen in love with that design, I obst uh, obst obstinately turned her down. Upon begging my mother for one more time, my mother who had warned us earlier held her purse strings tight, leaving Mari to sulk. Fine, stupid big sister! Without listening to my mother's uh, admonishments, she ran off. Sulking after being called stupid, I naturally didn't chase her right away. My mother, being optimistic about the aquarium's small size, also waited a while to go looking for Mari. Dun dun dun, how wrong they turned out to be. And now, all I'm left with are my regrets. If only I had gone after her sooner. If only I traded her keychains in the first place. Even so, the past is unchanging, and I am left with only my regrets to bear. So in case I could ever trade with Mari again, I've stubbornly carried around that keychain, the one with a pink droplet shape and a jellyfish charm, like a treasure. I rummaged through my bag, seeking to feel the keychain in my hand. Huh? Why? At a time like this, I'd forgotten to bring it. The keychain wasn't in the bag, nor in my pockets. 
I'm going to make a bold statement here on saying that Mari took it. Bam. I t I'm telling you right now, Mari took it. Huh? A sigh naturally slipped out of my body. After all, I've lost sight of Mari and strayed from Himeno. Himeno has the building map, so there's nothing I can do. Huh? At that moment, a pungent aroma floats by and causes me to speak in surprise. Unable to bear the irritating stench, I pinch my nose. Still, the stench seems to twist in my nose. It's made of the smell of sewage, sulfur, and the nauseating stink of vinegar. I'm not gonna try and talk with my nose closed anymore. Squish. As soon as I try to get away from the smell, something soft creeps along the bottom of my foot. As I hesitantly look down, I realize the true identity of the pu uh, putrid odor. Oh, what? Uh, it's... it's a corpse! I'm not sure what type, but it's as big as my arm span. The body is slowly decaying and hasn't retained its original form yet by its bulging round eyes and slightly extended tail fin, I can barely just tell it was a fish. Dang. I couldn't tell right away, but it has a silhouette similar to a piruka. Uh, I feel like I've seen those eerie glaring eyes, characteristic of a freshwater fish. I feel sick. Ugh. I move my foot slowly and a small fragment of the corpse sticks to the bottom of my shoe. Oh, on the underside of which I notice something wriggling desperately. The slight sound of flapping wings departs from beside, uh, from beside my ear, and I understand that the wriggling thing is an insect. Ah! Oh gosh, they're all gutted open and whatnot. Shaking, chills run up my spine, as if someone had pressed ice to it. I take a step back and drop my cell phone. The phone reacts with the backlight and LCD screen coming on, illuminating the dead body. The syrupy dead body absorbs the light and the winged insect that flees to avoid it. There is also a meandering white nematode that seems not to notice. The backlight soon disappears, leaving its stench amidst the darkness. The shadow of those hideous insects are scorched into my retinas and they sway like the light of a heat haze in the darkness. Uh, something was creeping up from the pit of my stomach. Oh god, I should try not to puke, right? It's already smelling wor really really bad in here. Like adding puke on top of this is probably not gonna make things better. Let's try and endure it. I immediately shut my mouth, and during what had come up, oh god, Okay, that is really worse. I thought like, you know, try and keep it in your stomach, even though that actually sounds kind of impossible. Because the moment vomit kind of comes up, you can't do shit anything about it, right? You either let it go, or you close your mouth. I've actually done this a couple of times while I was drunk. TMI, I know, but... And then, oh god, you try, you know, don't want to puke and... Ah, okay, let's forget that immediately. So yeah, <laughs> I immediately shut my mouth, and during what, ha what had come up, the intermingled acidic taste of the vomit that had come up and the scent of stomach acid lingering in my nostrils mixed with saliva and caused my eyes to water in pain. Why was it so painful? I can't figure out the answer to my doubts, not at all. I cover my eyes with both hands. I couldn't have made it if I didn't. But shutting out my vision leaves my, uh, leaves my sense of smell, causing the smell of rotten water and the stench of the dead body to become more intense, so I uncover my eyes. No, what is this? This is a place for the customers. Is it really alright for this to be here? On top of that, I was in the middle of chasing Mari, wasn't I? No, that isn't the problem. It's strange enough that there is a place like this in the middle of an aquarium. Anyway, I have to get out of here. The stench is so overpowering, it's as if, as if I can see it. I want to get out of here quickly, satisfying myself with the argument that it's a garbage dump or something and that if I, uh, and that if 
I only get away, I'll be fine. At any rate, I can go back the way I came. No, that's no good. I might run into Himeno. At this point, I don't want to see her face. My eyes having adjusted a bit to the darkness, I search for a way out. Here the tanks are broken, the little remaining water stinking and the bodies of living things have tumbled out here and there. I think about how happy I am that I can't see it. Even so, to find the exit, I'll have to look around. My nose has begun to go numb, and thanks to that, I'm somehow able to retain my sanity. Before long, I find a dim emergency light behind one of the tanks and head towards it as if it were the last hope I could cling to. I feel squishing several times beneath my feet, but I try to ignore it and move on. As I move towards the emergency light, it seems the smell is becoming faint. Hmm? I get used to the scattered shards of glass and the rotten fish corpses just before I reach the door. The tip of my show, or shoe feels as if it has kicked something hard, something different from before. Wondering what I had kicked, I casually look down. No. No. What is it? I get the sensation that all the blood has stopped flowing through me and that my heart has stopped completely. Those red flashes, man. The round thing I kicked was patches of hair, two eyes, a nose with a bone to it, and a mouth. All together it is... A human head? The round king, uh, thing I kicked has patches of hair. Oh wait, all together it is... A human face! Oh... Speaking accurately, it is a head rather than a face. It's completely lifeless and rolls away with a flopping sound when my foot touches it. Seeing the state the head is in, I begin to feel ill again despite having finally calmed down from before. Of the white cranium, only the forehead area seems to be exposed. It seems this is new and has only just begun to decay. No, for starters, there is no way a human head should be rolling around here. It's my imagination, or it has to be some, some from some model. I haven't yet looked in the direction it was rolling, convincing myself that it isn't a human head. It really is different, so there was re uh, so there so there was no satisfying myself. I place my hands on the door in an attempt to escape, unable to control my shaking hands. It takes three times before I can open the door. It's a heavy fire door that is usually open. Oh god. That I, I dislike creaking sounds as well. Uh. Wow. This is... I've actually... In the sea world that I've been to with my girlfriend, there were actually similar like things to exactly this. Like different pillars of fish tanks with different colored jellyfish all the, the jellyfish weren't colored but the jellyfish like they absorb the light or something or it, it, it just flows through them because they're translucent in a sense so because the fish tank had like colored light bulbs in them the jellyfish looked to be that color as well but that was absolutely beautiful so dang this is cool as well this is i step inside with my thoughts racing and the atmosphere changes completely once more. I can hear the sound of the door closing behind me. Inside is a very clean place. The transparent water is tinted a faint blue and inside float fantasy like jellyfish. Countless pillar shaped tanks are spread around and the water shimmers as if it reflects the light of the fluorescent lamp, red and yellow, green and purple the jellyfish's bodies diffusing light like a prism. In spite of this changed space I have reached, I'm fascinated by this shimmering live art display. Himeno, I mutter without thinking. Then I quickly shake my head, erasing the image of Himeno's face that appears in my mind. Earlier, she didn't come after me. After all, Himeno chose on her own to part ways from me. 
I'm sure it's because she dislikes me now. It isn't something I should worry about. Even at a quick glance, I can see that there are various types of jellyfish in the tank. Having made efficient use of the small space, it's a charming area. It's vividly, it vividly expresses the starry sky, as is fitting of the, manta, of, uh, of the name Manton Aquarium. Compared to the earlier Fish of the World booth, this one isn't at the least bit in decay. Uh, I wonder if Mari came this way. So yeah, um, in the beginning, well, I think I showed you guys in the very first video that there were like 30 bad endings and 4 true endings in total or something. So it's kind of obvious that the way to get those endings is by through choice and obviously making, I guess, bad choices will give you bad endings. So yeah, I'm not sure if I've been making bad choices up until this point, but I'm gonna try my best to obviously reach the, the true endings, the good endings, so yeah, let's see what the choices are for these two. Going back is dangerous, I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. I feel worried about Himeno all of a sudden. I'll go back. Hmm, so this is a choice of whether to just keep going and like, yeah, screw Himeno, or just like suddenly, Himeno, <laughs> please forgive me, and then we're gonna run back after. But running back after means going back through that dark, decayed-like fish tank booth area. So, you know what? I actually think going back is somewhat dangerous. And I do want to find more about the Mari stuff though. So I think I'm just gonna keep going on. I have to press on. Going back is dangerous. I can't do anything by stopping here. I have to press on. And so I start towards the starry sky. I gaze in fascination to the right and left of me. If circumstances weren't what they are, I would have stopped and stared into each and every tank. The tanks lined up all together are beautifully enough, but each one is vivid like the night sky inlaid with jewels. Altogether, there are seven tanks. Each one holds a different type of jellyfish, some with poison, some without, categorized by aspects such as where they live. They really are beautiful. I stop and stand in the very center, between the third and fourth tanks. I wonder if the last time we came, these tanks were here. Nakanobe Mari, my little sister. I lean my back against one of the tanks and sit down. Whenever Mari's face, is, uh, face appears in my mind, I lose all of my strength. If anyone saw me, I'd be embarrassed. But here and now, in Mountain Aquarium, there is no one around. I heave a sigh and look up at the ceiling. For some reason, a large fan is revolving there. My memories of the last time we visited Mountain Aquarium aren't all bad. It was the first time in a long time all four of us had gone out as a family. Mari and I got along really well, and we always held hands as we walked. We would do things like play house or read picture books aloud. Mari was a bit more of a tomboy than I, so even though I was the older sister, she was the one who gave the orders. Since it was the first time the two of us sisters went to the aquarium, it was natural for us to be very excited. Just as one would expect, the first time Mari and I laid eyes on the creatures of the sea, we, re -ex uh, we experienced fear, awe, and the sense of being deeply moved. The creatures we saw at that time have stayed with me as vivid memories. Happy memories. I still have plenty of them. But on such a special day of all days, Mari and I ended up fighting. The rest proceeded just as I remember. Since then, my parents buy me anything I want. However, I changed as well, and I didn't really want anything anymore. Greed itself seemed to decline for me and I never really got excited for anything. That's why, when my mother, mother bought me these boot sandals, I was happy. I was fascinated by their nostalgic ultramarine color. But one year after Mari disappeared, she stopped coming up in conversation. I don't know if my mother and father had accepted it as a tragic accident, or if, she, or if the sadness had slowly faded, but my new normal had begun. I had become an only child. 
But that is nothing more than an excuse I can't escape from. Mari, you're here, right? Finally, it seems my strength has returned, and I stand up. Even though I asked, no, one, no answer will come. The thundering ventilation fan in the ceiling is the only sound I can hear. It was almost at the same time I stood up. Ah, uh, kya! A crack appears in the glass of the tank behind me. Since the glass doesn't make any noise when it splits, I realize it's broken when a water splashes on my rear end. Water continues to flow out, gradually spreading to my feet. The amount of water from the tank is more than just puddles after a heavy downpour. Along with the water flowing forth, the jellyfish that had been in the tank until just a moment ago float out. In order to avoid contact with the water already soaking my sandals, I step back from the puddles without looking away. How? Why? As if to play further with my already bewildered mind, the tank behind me also cracks. Oh my god. All of them are cracking? <sighs> this time, I hear the high-pitched noise of glass cracking. Following that, the tanks each destroyed in turn. Being stuck in the middle of the passage, water is closing in on me from all sides, leaving me pressed in between. The edge of the water is steadily drawing near. What should I do? The words that slide from my mouth also flow away with the water. The colors of the tank that had once been so vibrant now seem eerie to me. Among these jellyfish are poisonous ones. Even worse, some of them are fatal. I'm thinking that my legs begin to shake in fear. No, but no matter how frightened I become, I become, I know I can't sit down. As if the area I'm in is shrinking, water and jellyfish are both heading towards me, and it's impossible for me to touch the floor. I have a feeling this is gonna be, cause at the very beginning I thought, remember about the choices that yeah, 30 different endings, that it would be like a sp certain scenario like this, where it'd be like, if you make the wrong choice, you end up dying and that would then be a bad ending. So that it would then bring you back up to this original choice and you know what the good choice is. But then making the bad decision basically just means that you die and then it gives you a bad, bad ending or one of many bad, bad endings. So we have to try and choose wisely here, I think. Um, I have no choice but to run straight through. No, I can't think of anything. Well, standing here is kind of hard too. Because eventually the water level is just going to keep rising and I'm pretty sure the jellyfish are just, you know. I'm not sure how the poison of the jelly. I don't think it's like, the poison has to be inside the jellyfish, right? And the moment they, they sting you or something, that's how the poison gets transferred? Because I don't think that it's just like there's poison around the jellyfish at all time and the moments and that the water that the jellyfish were in are also poisoned. So that's... Then she would already be poisoned, right? Because the water has touched her. Yeah, I'm not entirely sure how poisonous jellyfish work. Because I'm pretty sure that it's just like the poison is inside them. But they transmit it to their target that they want to poison. Somehow. Probably through the shocking or whatever. Whatever how jellyfish they do it. I'm not a jellyfish expert. I'm not Spongebob. So yeah. Um, what choice? What choice? I have no choice but to run straight through. I think it's, you know, it may seem reckless to just run because you could actually step on a jellyfish as well, I guess. But not doing anything and just keep standing here is just delaying the inevitable. So I think just running straight through, it's a risk, but we have to get out of here. So I have no choice but to run straight through. I no longer have time for doubt. At a glance, the door on the opposite side is closer than the one I came through. From here, the distance isn't too far to the interior door. Running at top speed should be good enough to reach that one. Run! I hesitate for a moment, then grit my teeth and take off running. It's no more than 10 meters. It is a distance that should pose no trouble, even for someone like me who tested below average in physical endurance. Gah! When I had run about 5 meters, 
just having picked, uh, passed the sixth tank, I fall full force onto my back. The floor is wet, so no, uh, so one might say this should have been expected. No, this is disgusting. The water soaks through my skirt and quickly soaks my underwear. The tank water is in direct contact with the skin on my rear. It is cold and wet, uncomfortable but unavoidable. When I put my hand on the tank to try to stand up, I discover that action is a mistake. Oh no, ouch. I squeeze my eyes shut at the pain that feels like I've been stabbed by a cold metal needle. No, it doesn't just feel like it. I have been stabbed by something. Have I been stung by? Shaking, I shift my line of sight to my hands. A jellyfish is covering my right hand. We're dead. <laughs> At that moment, I get upset that I can't feel the coldness of the water around my right hand. I got stung. What do I do? Someone. The pamphlet introducing the jellyfish had gotten mixed up with the piece of glass from the tank. Man of War. I noticed the name without much of a reaction, but it has to be the poisonous one to be called that. There have also been in uh, in in see in see incidences. Yeah, what the hell? Why did I think that was incidences had the word T in it? Which is why I thought this was going to be a different word rather than incidences. But it is incidences. So uh, there's there have also been incidences of fatalities. Fatalities. Poison. What do I do if I've been stung? Do I clean it? Is it bad if I don't clean it? Well, it's poison, so I would say so. I can feel my pulse quickening. I wonder if it's the poison making its way through me. What do I do? What do I do? What do I do? When I try to will myself to calm down, my impatience ramps up. Someone! Someone help me! Please? Help me! Uh-oh. It's trying to get... Trying to use my pulsating right hand for support to push myself up, I slide in the puddle and can't stand. It hurts. It really hurts. I put water on the area where I had been stung in an attempt to rinse it out. However, the opening of the wound stings and startles me. I need fresh water. Trying to apply pressure to the vein, I tightly grip the area where I'd been stung. Dad! Mom! Himeno! Mari! Wanting to be saved, I call out as loudly as I can. However, in reality, my voice has already grown hoarse. The corners of my eyes grow hot, and from them fall individual droplets. No! I'm going to die. My voice is no longer really a voice at all. Ah! Before long, an electric shock runs through my right hand. The subsi uh, subsiding of the intense pain brings my senses back to me. But my voice will no longer come out. Even when I try to think of something, nothing happens except the sensation of pain whirling inside me that fills me to the brim. Unable to control my body. I fall to the ground, first my head, then my chest, from my stomach to my feet. Having fallen on my face, half of my body is submerged in water. My heartbeat quickened, quickens. I became acutely aware of the flow of my blood. Ugh! Unable to stand it, I vomit. The very idea of being able to endure it no longer occurs to me. Even so, the poison won't be expelled from my body. My entire beady being becoming numb is proof that my blood has been pumping so quickly it has worn down my veins. <sighs> <sighs> Wanting to rinse out the remaining vomit in my mouth, I suck in water. It tastes like salt. Within my body, I'm struggling with all I have. On the outside, my shell has long exceeded the limits of its stamina. Blood is soaking through the uh, capillaries in my eyeballs. 
and the puddles spread spreading on the floor are pierced with red. Gradually, I stop feeling my blood flow. Is it because my heart has stopped? Or because my consciousness has disappeared? Either way, my consciousness stops and fades into darkness. With the same simplicity that a ventilation fan spews out cold air, my breath is evacuated from my body. This has got to be a bad ending, right? What? When I come to, I'm still gazing into the cylindrical tank, vacantly, thinking nothing other than, I wonder if something's in there. I stare into that tank. I have neither the urge to call out, nor the desire to walk away, merely the sensation that my consciousness alone is floating along the rippling sea. Why on earth am I here anyway? What have I come here to do? Whether, uh, whether I can't remember, or there was just no reason from the beginning. The jellyfish are pretty, especially just this jellyfish. Its color is so bright. The voice that starts talking right in front of me catches my attention for some reason. I feel like I've heard it somewhere before. Well, who is it? I'm unable to remember clearly, seeing only a wavering face that won't come into focus. Anyway, Mayu, where did she go? Mayu? That girl. She talked like she was looking for someone. Poor thing. If she's lost someone here, she probably won't find them. Hmm, wait a second. Where is this to begin with? Swaying, swaying, softly, softly. Drip drop, the sounds of drops resonating all around me. Gradually ceasing to care, my consciousness melt into the water. My form? This was a bad end. <laughs> oh gosh. <laughs> I was right about it all along. I mean, how could you ever possibly recover from that situation, right? You're poisoned by jellyfish, you kind of fall over. So yeah, that was a bad end, my form. Okay, so it's basically just in text. We got one out of the 29, was it? Three times nine, 27, right, 27. So um, yeah, this was one bad end, my form, I guess. Um, I don't know what much to say about this. So yeah, <laughs> this was a bad ending. So obviously we're gonna try, um, in the next video, I'm just going to return to the very point where all of the tanks break and then we'll choose the opposite uh, option and hopefully that will continue the story. But yeah, it's kind of interesting that it has these multiple sort of dead ends in a guess, in, in, a, in a sense, you know, because here I chose the bad option. I died. Bad ending, dead end as well. So it seizes our continuation but luckily we can just kind of skip through very quickly and continue from the same point forward so it is kind of interesting in that sense that there are a lot of these multiple branches but the thing about it is that with these bad endings sure there are multiple branches but those branches don't really go out very far they just stop very early on because you die you make the wrong choice so yeah anyway I'm just gonna continue from that point forward in the next video so yeah I hope you enjoyed this Sadly, we got a bad ending very quickly on, but considering there are 27, it's kind of likely that we're going to hit at least a couple along the way. So yeah, not much we can do about it except probably make the better choice in the next video. So yeah, I'll try and do that. Although I think in hindsight, this was the bad choice, right? But if you're in that situation, I think the best idea would be because the other one was just like, no, I don't know what the hell to do, so I'm just going to keep standing here. That doesn't seem like much of an option to me. That's actually no option at all. You're just continuing doing what you were doing, which was nothing. So, yeah, I guess in that sense, in that particular option, you're just waiting for some other special being 
that comes out of nowhere that rescues you. I don't know. But obviously, we're going to find out what happens with that in the next video because we're going to return to that particular uh, option. So, yeah. Thank you very much for watching. Please like and subscribe for more. And I'll see you in the next video. Peace.